All right, uh, hello everyone. Welcome uh, to my talk at Communities on Edge Day. Um, the title of my talk. Let me just show it there. Okay. All right. Well, the title of my talk is Managing WebAssembly Applications with Kubernetes. So um, today we'll be covering a lot about web, why talk about WebAssembly and how it's the future of edge computing and why it's really necessary for its computing and how you can manage that with the help of Kubernetes, since uh, we are uh, having Kubernetes today uh, very well integrated on edge devices as well. A uh, very quick introduction to myself. I'm Shivai Lamba. I'm a developer advocate at Millisearch. It's an open source uh, Rust-based search engine. And I'm also a contributor at Layer 5. Layer 5 is the service mesh community uh, that runs a lot of different open source programs that are currently incubated in the uh, CNCF landscape. And I'm also... Um, an evangelist for Wasm Edge project, which uh, I'll be talking about a lot more about today. And if you want to connect with me, you can connect me on Twitter. But yeah, uh, let's get started. First of all, um, just a very quick rundown on what we're going to be covering. So in the outline, as you can see that we are going to be covering what is this WebAssembly. We'll be talking about the Wasm Edge project. We'll be talking about uh, why the Kubernetes uh, community actually needs uh, was a match, and then we're also going to be covering uh, what are some of the limitations that comes with uh, WebAssembly and how we can overcome that using uh, Kubernetes. And then you're also going to be looking at some examples uh, where we are going to be seeing how you can actually run WebAssembly applications on Kubernetes. And then, yeah, what's next? Uh, what uh, things are for the future for uh, running WebAssembly, WebAssembly applications with Kubernetes? Well, so first of all, um, just a very quick uh, recap of what exactly is WebAssembly, right? So um, you can just think of WebAssembly as a binary instruction format. Uh, essentially, it's a format that is primarily devised a uh, long time back um, as a method to actually run alongside uh, in the web browser. Because we know that uh, with JavaScript, there are a lot of performance uh, limitations that actually comes uh, if we want to run, like let's say, some kind of really high-end applications, uh, like such as video editing on web, web browsers. Uh, using JavaScript can be having a lot of limitations. So that is why uh, WebAssembly was born. And the main idea was uh, to be able to actually uh, use languages such as C, C++, and create byte-sized executables that could actually run on the browser with the help of this binary instruction format that is WebAssembly. And uh, that allowed for very, uh, very uh, highly intensive and highly computational uh, applications to actually be run directly in the browser with the help of assembly. So you could actually run these C or C++ compiled programs and uh, run them directly in the browser. But today, uh, WebAssembly has grown and matured and is now no longer just part of the browser. Uh, in fact, the application that we have today with WebAssembly is just a very small part of within the browser. It has moved outside the browser. Uh, it has covered servers serverless, and today, of course, with its computation as well. And that's why we're going to be talking today a lot more about how WebAssembly is uh, revolutionizing Edge, right? Because um, when, when it comes to Edge, uh, we are seeing a lot of Edge, uh, 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 edge so, like, you know, applications in machine learning and even uh, in uh, Web3, right, and blockchain uh, running uh, Dapper or server-side applications. Um, so that's why uh, today, uh, like, you know, WebAssembly has grown a lot more in popularity, and also so it has moved outside the, serv uh, outside the web uh, to support uh, a lot of server-side applications as well. And uh, now we also have actually support for a lot of different other scripting languages like Python, uh, Rust, and you can actually compile all these different languages uh, and to be actually executed using WebAssembly. Well, uh, then I'd like to officially introduce the Wasm Edge project. Uh, the Wasm project is an open source project that was currently, uh, it, it was recently incubated on the Cloud, uh, Cloud Native Computing Foundation. And essentially, it's a lightweight uh, runtime um, for WebAssembly. And it is mainly used for Cloud Native Edge applications. And so if we just talk about some of the features of uh, uh, the Wasm Edge project, well, it is one of the, the, one of the fastest web, uh, WebAssembly virtual machines because it uses ahead of time compilation uh, as compared to any other types of uh, WebAssembly uh, runtimes that, that are there. And um, it uh, supports out of the box uh, interfaces, especially with machine learning. There's a very popular TensorFlow interface that comes directly with uh, Wasm Edge. Uh, so you'll, you can definitely try it out uh, if you are trying to run uh, machine learning applications on uh, edge based devices. And uh, it also comes with support for a lot of different scripting languages like JavaScript, Python. 
as well. And there's also OCI compliant. That means it's, uh, you're, you can use it with any kind of container applications, uh, and it supports uh, all of the different policies that are there. Um, but yeah, before we move on to the next part, uh, I'll definitely recommend checking this particular Rosimex project. Uh, of course, I mean, um, it's a relatively new project right now. So if you are curious uh, and if you are interested in WebAssembly, it's a really good uh, platform to be at. Uh, it's still a very small community that is there. We have uh, weekly uh, meet, uh, monthly meetings, um, and working group meetings for uh, the Wasmets project. And of course, there is a lot of uh, scope. So you can also join the Slack channel for uh, WebAssembly. Uh, but yeah, moving towards like, why does the Kubernetes community actually need Wasmets, right? Why, why uh, are we just talking about Kubernetes on uh, on this platform for Kubernetes on Edge? Why does it actually need Wasmets? Uh, so uh, one of the biggest uh, important reasons is that uh, today um, Edge uh, com competition, of course, we are talking about Edge today, uh, has uh, like you know increased quite considerably. But if we talk about the standard containers, right? These are usually the Linux-based containers. Uh, these these occupy a lot of space, and uh, they, of course, um, with edge computation, you are restricted in terms of how much space and how much uh, computation that you uh, might have. And of course, in a lot of times, you require your uh, runtime to be very quick, right? The containers have to be uh, have to spun up very quickly, especially when we are uh, dealing with edge-based devices. And that's where WebAssembly actually comes into the picture and has immediate benefits as compared to the standard uh, Docker or Linux-based runtimes that we have, because uh, um, they occupy only 1% of the tool space, and they are much more quicker in terms of uh, uh, setting up uh, and very easily, uh, quickly to set up and uh, run them. So that is why, uh, like, you know, WASM or WebAssembly is a really great choice for the Kubernetes ecosystem, especially if you are trying to set up some containers uh, for your Edge applications. But of course, there are some pain points when it comes to WebAssembly. Uh, one of the biggest ones that we have is that uh, it requires its own set of tool chains, SDKs, um, and that of course makes it uh, a little bit more uh, like you know difficult to actually set up, in, especially if you have already a very well set up infrastructure for your uh, like you know Linux-based containers, right? Um, but the good part is that uh, you can actually run both your standard Docker uh, or your uh, like you know your uh, normal Linux-based containers side-by-side side with uh, WebAssembly containers as well. Uh, and that's what we are going to be seeing how uh, this entire in infrastructure sort of looks like uh, on, the, uh, on the upper way. Uh, but yes, uh, I mean, uh, Developers can actually use uh, a lot of different container tools like Kubernetes, Docker, uh, to actually deploy WebAssembly applications because we have support uh, for doing uh, basically for uh, deployment of these uh, lightweight WebAssembly runtime uh, applications with any of these different platforms like Docker or Kubernetes. Um, so, of course, the question is how to how do we achieve this? So, I like this uh, like to spend some amount of time uh, talking about this particular architecture. So, over here, what you can see is uh, the entire container ecosystem, uh, right? Uh, so, we have our um, higher uh, level runtimes, we have our lower level runtimes, and of course, we have the entire Kubernetes stack that you can see. And of course, the goal is uh, that if we can actually load both um, your Linux container images and WebAssembly uh, images both together inside just one, simple, uh, one uh, single application. Uh, so what you are seeing over here are some of the highlighted uh, ways. So for example, if you want to implement uh, Kubernetes um, and uh, to basically help manage these WebAssembly applications, you could either use a Cryo or you could use ContainerD or you can even like you know use a Docker as well to uh, help uh, run these applications. And um, for example, we know about different types of uh, low-level OCI compliant runtimes like CRun, uh, right? Uh, so uh, the reason why CRun is chosen, it's a very lightweight. C uh, based uh, runtime. Uh, so basically, we built an integration uh, on top of CRUN by the name of CRUN W, which is mainly for running uh, CRUN with WebAssembly. Uh, so that is why uh, you get a lot of different options uh, based on this community stack. You can use any type of Kubernetes platform, either like, you know, if you have a, a larger setup, you could use standard Kubernetes, or if you have a, a lighter set, you could use K3D, uh, K3S, right? Uh, smaller communities as well. Uh, so that Essentially, what this particular uh, entire ecosystem sort of uh, is sort of demonstrating is that um, 
as we talk about our standard Kubernetes deployment, right? Um, when we are talking about uh, the different type of container runtimes, um, typically that involves just Linux containers, right? But in, uh, instead, what now you can do is that uh, in order to overcome the limitations that are put forward by uh, running WebAssembly, uh, which requires its own set of tool chains, you can actually run it in compliance with the existing Linux containers, and that overcomes the issues that are there in actually uh, deploying the standard uh, variation of uh, WebAssembly. Uh, so that is why this uh, entire ecosystem that we are looking at is really amazing. And it's very easy to actually set up and run WebAssembly applications uh, by including this in, as part of this entire ecosystem. And uh, then I'd like to just sort of now cover a bit more about how you can actually go ahead and start. Uh, there are, of course, some prerequisites. Uh, for example, you'll have to install Rust. You'll have to install Kubernetes. Uh, but apart from that, uh, you will also need to require uh, some of the other different tools, um, including uh, Cryo, which um, is a high-level container runtime um, that pulls a lot of the different images from uh, things like Docker Hub. Uh, you need Wasmeds, uh, so you can install Wasmeds very easily by going to uh, github.com slash wasmeds slash wasmeds, and it's very easy to set up. Of course, I mean, if you have a Linux-based system, it will be the easiest, uh, and of course, you need Kubernetes as well. So once you have actually installed all of these different things, uh, we'll just cover some of the different steps in which uh, you can very easily uh, set up and actually run a WASI uh, image uh, application inside of your Kubernetes pod. So the first thing is like you can just uh, follow these set of commands. And uh, at the end, I'll also just share some links. Um, I've already done that over here in this slide. Uh, you can just follow some of these steps in the documentation to very easily set up um, Kubernetes, Wasmeds on site in, in, uh, in your system. Uh, but yeah, the first step would be to actually go ahead and start uh, Kubernetes. Uh, of course, uh, this particular example showcases running Kubernetes uh, in your local development environment. But uh, if you have a hosted uh, instance of Kubernetes, you can also do that. Uh, so just uh, run these commands. And then, of course, uh, once uh, you're, uh, you run these particular commands, your Kubernetes uh, cluster, uh, your local cluster will uh, set up and it will run. And then uh, the next thing is to like, you know, start the actual cluster. So once you follow th these particular steps where you provide uh, your uh, Kubernetes provider, and then uh, we basically are going ahead and uh, running all these different uh, commands to essentially allow for the WebAssembly applications to start running in Kubernetes as pods. And once we are able to accomplish that, um, Basically, we have a very simple to use uh, GitHub uh, project, open source project, um, where essentially we uh, have created our Docker image. So you can pull that uh, as a container image uh, from uh, Docker Hub, and we'll run that inside our Kubernetes cluster. And what you see is the end result is that um, we have successfully actually run the WebAssembly application. Uh, it's a, WASI, a simple WASI demo, um, and that has successfully run inside of our Kubernetes cluster. Because normally Normally, if, uh, if you were to actually run these, um, like, you know, this WebAssembly application, uh, of course, there are different other uh, runtimes where you can support them, but it's super simple uh, with just um, at max, like, in half an hour or one hour to set up and start running uh, your WebAssembly application on, um, on inside of your Kubernetes cluster. Uh, similarly, you can also use this for uh, doing machine learning in inference as well. Um, of course, what you're essentially doing with uh, the WASM Edge uh, WebAssembly in interface is that you're offloading all of your machine learning tasks uh, into your uh, WebAssembly application. So you'll have basically, let's say, a Rust function that uh, takes into account all the different inferences that you can do with machine learning. And uh, you can also set up that entire infrastructure uh, directly inside of your Kubernetes cluster. Uh, similarly, for if you're like running some sidecars uh, inside of uh, on Y proxy, uh, you can also uh, very easily set that up and put that in uh, put that inside your Kubernetes cluster. Of course, um, the one uh, the uh, implementation that we covered uh, covers the Wasmets project. But outside of the Wasmets project, there are other different ways in which you can also uh, run WebAssembly applications using uh, 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 using Kubernetes. So one of the projects is Crustlet. Uh, it's a Rust-based uh, uh, like you know runtime that allows for running WebAssembly workloads in a Kubernetes cluster. Uh, so you can also check this out as well. Um, it has a very good support uh, and really great do developer document. Uh, as you speak, and uh, this is also a good, uh, good way of actually running your WebAssembly uh, workloads inside of a Kubernetes cluster. 
And then, of course, these are some just resources. You can have a look at uh, these. Um, there are dedicated uh, working groups today for WebAssembly. You can join those. Uh, of course, the WasMS project has its own working group today. And um, you can also look at some of these other links specifically for uh, Trustlet uh, as well. And for, uh, for example, like, let's say if you want to get a little more uh, context into the world of WebAssembly, um, there is also uh, WASI. And uh, of course, if you are uh, interested a lot more inside of how uh, WASMS actually works. Uh, there are a lot of different talks that are already there. Uh, uh, one, of our, one of the co-founders of Second State, uh, Michael Yuan, had also given a talk uh, just yesterday for uh, the cloud native WASM edge. Uh, so if you're also in, like, like generally interested in the ecosystem of cloud native and how WebAssembly is like, you know, uh, interacting with it, yesterday there was the co-located event for the cloud native WASM uh, day. Uh, so of course, uh, a lot of the activities, especially for the WASM edge project, are going on inside of that particular uh, con conference co-located event as well. Uh, but of course, uh, today we are now also starting to see a lot of different uh, companies using different types of Kubernetes platforms like K3D, uh, K3S uh, to also like you know um, start using Wasm Edge inside of their uh, workloads. So it's definitely a very uh, like you know new field as well in terms of how uh, like you know um, WebAssembly is uh, being used in its computation. And uh, yeah, with that, I, that sort of concludes my talk. Uh, but of course, uh, what I'd like to conclude uh, is that uh, WebAssembly is the future for serverless and for Edge. And uh, like, you know, Kubernetes is a very great way to be able to actually manage these uh, uh, applications uh, that if you have a WebAssembly-based application. Uh, yeah, uh, if you have any other questions, feel free to ask. Otherwise, thank you so much for attending today's talk. So I've got a question too. I understand that there are ways to run web assemblies on very small systems, yeah. like maybe systems that don't even run Linux. Yeah. Uh, could you tell us about that and what's available? So uh, the question is mainly specifically about, uh, so uh, could you repeat the question one? Oh, I'd like to hear more about running web assemblies on very low resource systems, yeah. like systems that maybe are so small that they can't even run Linux. You know, something like an Arduino, for example, okay. that right. um, has minimal or no OS. Yeah. Yeah, so um, that's a really good question, first of all. Um, of course, right, uh, we have seen that uh, if you're running uh, Arduino, if you have an Arduino, or like let's say you have a Jetson Nano, right? Uh, NVIDIA Jetson Nano. So those are completely capable of running, uh, like let's say, uh, machine learning in friends. Um, and we usually talk about how machine learning on edge today is becoming very popular. So um, if you're talking about uh, actually running these highly computational um, like you know, uh, com com competitions, for example, with machine learning, um, the way in which you'll actually run them is that you'll have a deployed source of WASM Edge uh, that enables you to provide an environment. Uh, and how this sort, this sort of work is that, um, like, let's say you have a Python based implementation or you have a JavaScript implementation for um, your web, like machine learning, let's say. So you'll be offloading your uh, main inference for machine learning, or in this case, it could be any other di different type of application uh, to your Rust-based uh, function, because Rust is a lot more uh, smaller footprint, and it also is a lot more highly computational. Um, so you'll basically have uh, your Rust act as a way of being able to implement all the highly computational functions. And this will run inside of the WASM container. And uh, WASM container is a lot more smaller as compared to a, uh, like, let's say, Linux-based uh, container. And uh, the other benefit is also that WebAssembly provides a lot more secure environment. It's a lot more secure. Uh, so essentially, this is the way in which you'll architect your uh, program to run on a very less uh, resource-intensive um, like a hardware limited uh, system like let's say uh, an Arduino. So you can deploy your WASM Edge uh, uh, instance on that and then uh, offload all of your different high competition tasks uh, to like let's say Rust and then run them. So yep, I hope that answers the question. Yeah, that's good. Thank you. Anybody else got questions? We have a few minutes before the next speaker is due to come on. Uh, maybe I'll come up with another one then. Um, 
Do you have any recommended platforms? Because I think for a lot of us, we're used to Docker at this point, but WebAssembly is kind of new. Yeah. So what would you recommend the steps be if I just want to play around with it on my laptop or something, or uh, would you recommend using a Pi instead, or uh, how would you go about that? Uh, yeah, that's a really good question. So um, for me, how I started off was uh, actually uh, I was uh, working with TensorFlow.js, and uh, there you have an ability to uh, basically um, have a, a Wasm or WebAssembly as a backend. Um, so the way I got started with Wasm was um, simply just um, first of all, understanding how Wasm actually works in the web, because that's one of the easiest way to get started. Um, because um, there's a lot of wide developer support, spe specifically for uh, using Wasm on the web browser. Uh, how basically, like you know, you are uh, converting your, um, like let's say, a C++ function into a Wasm executable. Uh, so generally, that's the process that I'll recommend to everyone uh, to just create a simple C++ program, compile that uh, into a Wasm executable and then actually execute that. So uh, because that is generally the starting point in which how you can get started um, to basically convert any of your existing uh, C, C++ code, Rust code uh, into and compile that into a Wasm executable and then implement that inside of your program. Uh, so that's definitely one of the good ways. Um, and then once you have gotten a hang of how like you know the Wasm uh, executable looks like, then you can uh, start implementing other things as well. Here, I'll, I'll. Hello, thank you very much for your talk. Um, are there any kinds of constraints in terms of the complexity of application that you might want to run in WebAssembly? Yeah, so um, of course, um, that's first of all a very good question in terms of like, you know, um, like let's say you have uh, a lot of different uh, applications running. And of course, uh, today, um, when you talk about any kind of a microservices based architecture, there can be a lot of different services that are uh, running inside of an application. So um, of course, the way uh, where we sort of see right now uh, WebAssembly and uh, specifically you talk about on like, you know, Edge is that um, it's very well suited for simpler applications which might not have a number of different services uh, interdependent on each other. So that's definitely true that um, that scope of WebAssembly in Kubernetes uh, is like you know, it's improving, and uh, of course, so far what we have seen is simple applications that do not have a lot of different services. Uh, but the way we can uh, architect more number of services to actually run together uh, inside of a WebAssembly application, that's something that we're still exploring. Uh, is there all, uh, is there something uh, some distribution of Kubernetes that you can that's really easy to get started, or uh, do you have to install every co uh, component of Kubernetes on your own, like in a Raspberry Pi or something? Uh, yeah, so basically uh, I'll recommend two things. Uh, so of course the standard Kubernetes itself is relatively simple, but if you are, like let's say, if you want to run a lightweight uh, instance of Kubernetes, you can look at uh, K3D and K3S, um, because those are lighter weight, uh, like you know, Kubernetes instance that you can set up. So I'll definitely recommend using those. You talked about packaging these in OCI containers. Is the process for building these as capable as it is with Docker, where there's mechanisms, you can just use the standard mechanisms for signing these things and moving them around in conventional container image res registries? Yeah, definitely. That's possible. Okay, we've got still seven minutes before the next one. If 
anybody else has questions. Okay, thank you. All right, thank you.